Okay, so this is going to be our notes on solving inequalities. This is lesson 5, 1 and 5, 2. And we're going to go over these notes and then we're going to assign those two lessons. Uh, you can look on Power School and see what's assigned there for today. But so uh, most people know these. Uh, it's a, an inequality is a sentence or a mathematical statement that includes uh, this greater than symbol, symbol, this less than symbol, this less than and equal to symbol, that's what that one line underneath means, and then the greater than or equal to symbol. Uh, an example of using these symbols or an inequality is where it says x is greater than or equal to 20, which just means x can be 20 and anything greater than 20. And then here y, uh, y is less than 15, so anything less than 15, uh, y can be equal to. So that's kind of, these are both inequalities. Now you can get even more in detail with these and 5.3 will be using doing something like that. And then, uh, so we can, the thing to remember about inequalities is you can also use something called set builder notation. And here we have uh, the first way we're used to it. This is not set builder. It's just, you know, the X and using the symbols from inequalities. But for set builder notation, we put it in these little brackets. And then we have whatever the letter or the variable is equal to. We put a line. And then we put the the actual inequality after that. Okay, so when you see that in your homework, make sure you're not confused by that. Okay, any questions? So far? So the equal is same thing. Same thing. So this equals that. Same thing. Uh, you can also take an inequality and you can graph it on a number line. So how I always do it is I just write the number line, I put 20 somewhere in the middle or the number I'm starting with that it's greater than or equal to whatever. And then uh, the thing to remember is you can have a greater than or it can be greater than or it can be greater than or equal to. Uh, the other ones, it can also be less than or less than and equal to. Uh, how you note that on a graph is if it's greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, you fill in the point it starts at. So here, x says x is greater than or equal to 20. So we start at 20, we go to the right when it's greater than, and you fill in the 20 completely. If it was just x is greater than 20, you would put a circle here, but you would not fill it in. So that's kind of how you use a number line to do it. This is your set builder notation, and this is your normal inequality that you might see. Let's keep going. So we can do things like addition, subtraction, and those kind of things within uh, inequalities. So here's an example of an, of an addition problem. Am I going too fast? No? I can, yeah, so hold on. Let me go back. All right, so if you look at this addition problem here, uh, we have x minus 20 is greater than or equal to 8. Okay. You treat this just like an algebra problem, and you want to get x by itself, and then a whole number on the other side. Here we have this number 12 over here. We need to move it over. So we just use the properties of algebra. We're going to add 12 to both sides. And in the end, we get x is greater than or equal to 20. And then we can uh, use set builder notation, right? Right here. You know, in the brackets, x, draw a line, and x is greater than or equal to 20. And we could even write a number line. I didn't do it here because we just did it in our notes. That's an example of addition. If we then looked at subtraction, we could then see m plus 19 is greater than 56. We would then, to get m by itself, we subtract 19 from both sides, and then we get m is greater than 37. So here's the condition where it's greater than and not equal to. As, uh, for this one, we then draw the number line. We start at 37. We leave the circle open, and then draw it to the right. And our set builder notation would be m, draw the line, m is greater than 37, within brackets. So that's examples of addition and subtraction. So you can also do word problems with these. Uh, your book's going to cover a few of these. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure you had a, uh, we went over one as a class. And uh, we'll probably do a couple more in worksheets or something just to get practice with this. So here, this is from your book on page 291. 
if you wanted to follow along, you can. But it's talking about this guy, Felipe, Felipe, and he says he needs needs for the temperature of his leopard gecko's basking spot to be at least 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, currently the spot is 62.5 degrees Fahrenheit. How much warmer does the spot need to be? So then, a good way to look at this, you don't have to go through each, this step each time. Uh, this is just an example. Sometimes when your brain sees something, it's, you see the process overall, it can then start working it faster. So a good good way to start is you just you just state in a you say in a statement or write in a statement what you need to know. Okay, and then the words in this would be the current temperature needs to be at least 82 degrees Fahrenheit. That's kind of the need of it, or what really this problem is talking about. He has a basking spot. It's currently something else, but it needs to be 82 degrees Fahrenheit. And you can say it different ways. You could say uh, the current spot is 62.5, and it needs to be 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, and then we can add a variable. Uh, we will call it T for for the temperature, and that's the number of degrees the temperature needs to rise. And then we could then write the equality because we have a variable T, and we know the temperature needs to be 82. It's currently at 62.5 degrees Fahrenheit. So then uh, we can use this, this, and T to figure out where it needs to be. And then we can go 62.5 plus whatever the temperature needs to be uh, is equal to 82 or greater than or equal to 82. And then we can turn this in by using uh, we could subtract, right? So we can go minus 62.5, minus 62.5. Uh, if we do the math, it looks like 19.5. T is greater than or equal to 19.5. And then we could draw this on a number line. We could say this is say 19, this is 20, so then it needs to be equal to or greater to then, so we'll go right here, we'll put in the dot, okay, and then go right there, okay. Now it doesn't say if there's, uh, it needs to be at least that temperature, maybe there is a limit, so it's not covering that in this problem, but we can see it, it needs to rise at least 19.5. Once it gets there, it's right on, but maybe it could it could rise a little bit more than that. Okay. So any questions on that one? Word problems a little bit harder. They kind of um, you know require a little bit of thought and taking the words and putting them into uh, equations and, and mathematical statements. But you know, over time, you get better at it. Okay. So that's good. So our next thing is using multiplication division. Uh, with inequalities. And there's just a couple of properties that you need to remember. And for, for positive numbers, we're going to positive numbers. So if, you, if you're multiplying, so it says here if both sides are multiplied by a positive number, the inequality is still true still true as long as you're multiplying both sides by the same positive number so here we have 6 is less than 9 and then if we multiply by 3 we have 18 is less than 27 okay. now this is a basic one but in, in in these inequality problems you're going to have this longer inequality and you're going to have to you're going to have a fraction and maybe you need to multiply it by a number to get it all to get rid of that fraction, and then when you multiply it by a positive number, the thing to remember is uh, you don't have to change the sign at all. It stays the same. And then uh, if we have pauses, so then if we have a negative one, if we multiply, and this can be division as well. So if we multiply or divide by a negative number, it's different. OK? 
okay? Mm -hmm. So here it says if both sides are multiplied by a negative number, the direction of the inequality is reversed. Okay? And then it will still be true. So here's an example. Oh, come on. So it says if both sides are multiplied by a negative number, like I said before, the inequality is reversed. So we take that symbol, we go the other way. So here's the example. Let me move it up a little bit. So here we have the same thing. 6 is less than 9. Okay. If we then take the negative 3 in there, we would then say negative 18 is greater than negative 27. So it switches. Uh, it's just important to remember that whenever you're doing inequalities and uh, you multiply or divide by a negative number, change the direction of the sign. And you should be good. You see this is reloading here. Let me pause this for a minute until it's done. So this is an example of and now we can take this multiplication division and we can uh, make it into an inequality using what the words here and then we'll practice using one of those uh, rules that we just followed. So uh, this one says that the students surveyed at Madison School uh, fewer should be fewer than 84 said they have ever purchased an item online. Okay. That is about one eighth of those surveyed. How many students were surveyed? This is on page 207 of your book. Okay. So uh, if you look at this, so we look at what, what do we know? So we want to know how many number of students surveyed. So we'll just call that N. You can call it S, whatever you want to call it. Okay. And then the other thing we know is one eighth of the number of students surveyed is less than 84. Okay. Um, and then if we just take that, we can then take so one eighth of the students, the number of students. So we just take one eighth times n, and that's less than 84. We end up with the inequality that says one eighth n is less than 84. So. We then use our um, property that we just learned. We would then take this, multiply it by 8 on both sides, do our math. This one cancels. N is less than 84 times H, 672. So less than 672 students were surveyed. Okay, and we could then write this in our set notation. N N is less than 672. Like that, and then we could also write on a number line. This is a little bit trickier. It's a pretty big number, so we'll just go like. 660, 680, and then uh, we can go right here. Leave it open because it's less than. And we could even, because we have these big numbers, we could put what it is. So 72 above it. Okay. So that's an example of that, like if we did a word problem with these. Let me just show you some other examples of these by multiplying. So uh, here we have negative 3 7th r is less than 21. So you can see here we're gonna we want to get rid of this fraction right here so we do the inverse and negative. So negative 7 thirds we multiply that by this side. We gotta do the same thing on the other side. Here this negative 7 third cancels everything. The 7 cancels this way. 3 cancels that way so we're left with r. And then here we got negative 7 times 21. Let's just do that math. One forty seven over three. That's going to be a negative. Maybe that divides by three. It does. So R. And then if you you see up here R was less than. So now that we did the negative sign through, this then switches, and R is going to be greater than 49. That would be the answer for that one. Okay. And then we're going to do our uh, set notation. 
we would say the R, R is greater, this should be negative, right? Forgot the negative there. It's negative 143, so R is less, greater than negative 49. Put that in here. That's our notation. You're going to see that, that's why I'm making sure you we do that. And then we're just going to put some lines in here, right? To, put, to graph it on our number line, we'll just go like, 51, 49, 47, these will be negatives, 45, and then R is greater than 49, so we put an open circle, and it's greater, we're going to the right, like that. So that's a multiplication example with uh, a negative, and then uh, if we're going to solve by division, there's 160t uh, is greater than 8. So then here, using our same algebra principles and uh, just rules of algebra, we have 60. We need, to, we need to make this t is greater than something. So to get rid of the 60, we divide both sides by 60. Okay. And uh, don't worry about this So then if we divide 60 by 60 on this side, we're going to have t, okay? And then 8 divided by 60 is going to be, well, let's just do the fraction. So 8 doesn't go into 60. It looks like it's 4 goes in there, 2 fifteenths. So t is greater than 2 fifteenths. And then uh, we'd have to put this on a number line, so we might want to make this... This would be uh, zero, and then we'll make this two fifteenths. We'll make this uh, four fifteenths, <coughs> and then it's going to be greater. It's not equal to as well, so we'll leave the circle open like that. Okay, and then if we want to write the set notation, we would do it right here. T, T is greater than to 15. Okay, that's kind of how you're doing. Several examples how you're doing. And uh, any questions on that? It's the same properties of algebra uh, that we've been doing. And uh, just follow those rules. Hopefully, you've got a good grasp on them. Most people should. Okay, And just take your time. Usually, if you make a mistake in algebra, it's because you're skipping a step. Or you're rushing. Okay, so you write every step if possible. It helps you backtrack and find your mistakes. Okay, so that's that. Uh, go ahead and finish your homework, and that'll be good.